Welcome to this Power Up webinar, taking a look at how to create simple effects in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create transition effects in Final Cut. Transitions actually mean something because the camera represents the audience's point of view. When you edit, you're guiding what the audience sees of your story. A cut is a change in the audience's perspective. You cut when you have something new to show the audience. You don't cut unless you have something new to show the audience. Don't cut just to cut. This is distracting and diminishes your story's impact unless you want to be distracting. A dissolve represents a change in time or place. When we dissolve, we move somewhere else, else in time, somewhere else in geography. And a wipe breaks the story and takes the audience somewhere totally different. A wipe is classically used between an open and the start of the program, or between the program and a, and a commercial break, where you want to break out of the story and go somewhere different. So let's take a look at the transition effects that we have available to us inside Final Cut. Here I have a series of clips courtesy of Jim Walker and Lobster's Gone Wild Productions, and we have a cut right here. A cut is an instantaneous change between one shot and the next. We're all familiar with cuts. That's the default transition in any edit. We can add a dissolve by highlighting the edit point, typing command, T, Command T, and it applies the default transition, which is a dissolve. If we play that through, we are moving from one place to another. There's a change in this case in location. There may or may not be a change in time. If I highlight the transition, press the Delete key, I can delete it. To add the transition, select it, change the duration, grab a wing, and drag it. When a transition is applied to a clip, this allows me to trim, do a roll trim, underneath the transition, a ripple trim to the out, a ripple trim to the in by clicking on these three icons at the top. I can also select the transition, type Control D, as in David, and type in the duration. I want to use a 30-frame duration, or a 45-frame duration, or a 10-frame duration. In each case, I type Control D, and then type in the duration that I want for the transition, or, in fact, the selected clip. I'm going to highlight the transition and delete it. We can control what the default duration is for a transition by going up to Final Cut Pro, go to Preferences, go to Editing, and under Transitions, notice that I've changed the default setting of one second to two-thirds of a second because for me, a dissolve that lasts for a second hangs too long and feels like it's just lingering more than I would like. New with the 10.3 update is the ability to have a default audio duration as well, and this is set by default to half a second. Once you've got the preferences set, now when I type Command T, it's automatically, Control D, a 20 frame transition. If I select a clip and type Command T, it applies a transition to all the selected edit points. If I select multiple clips and type Command T, it applies transitions, the default transition, to all the selected edit points. But we have more transitions than this. If we go to the Transition Browser, which is this icon all the way over here on the right, and click it, there's over a hundred transitions that ship with Final Cut. Now let's just pretend that we think that this 3D rectangle is just the most incredible transition that I could ever possibly imagine I want to use it all the time. First, you need a life. And second, to make that happen, control or right click on the transition and say, make default. Now, when I select a transition, type Command T, I'll use the arrow keys. My default transition is now that 3D rectangle transition. I'm going backwards using the left arrow and wiping from one to the other. There's lots and lots of cool transitions here. One that uh, is worth pointing out is called the um, clothesline. I'll drag that over to here. I'll again use the arrow keys and notice the effect that we've got. One shot pushes the other off and it sets, settles into place playing it. It looks like we're sort of moving from something hanging on a clothesline to another clothesline. If I select the transition, 
we can change some of the settings associated with a transition by going up to the inspector. That's this collection of icons up here. Make sure the one on the right is blue. This displays the inspector, and the inspector is where we make changes to all of our effects, including transitions. With the transition selected, this shows me the name of the transition, and we can change the direction it moves from right to left or left to right. But there are more complex transitions that are available. For instance, let's take a look at this one called Clone Spin. What Clone Spin does is it, well, let me just use the arrow keys. I'm going to go slow so you can see this. We zoom back. We're in a, a circular room where pictures are on the wall. But look at those pictures. These are different shots from my sequence. And then, again, using the arrow key, just so we can go at slow motion, I move from the original shot of the sea turtle to the school of fish. Well, notice these yellow dots. These yellow dots represent the still images that are here inside this display. Let me just pull back enough so we can see what's going on here. Uh, good, right there. For instance, I want shot one. Okay, notice that I'm adjusting the yellow dot, and the picture in the top left corner is tweaking, or here. I want to change our fish. I'll take four, find a good picture of the turtle where the flappers are down here. Look for a good schooling shot. I can tweak my pictures to get the look that I want. so that when I move through here, again using the arrow keys, my pictures align. Now these are all still frames. The only moving video is the outgoing shot, I'll play this in real time, and the incoming shot. But the transition itself moves so quickly you never notice that the pictures that are in this curved wall are still frames, and the frame that's being frozen is the one that's underneath the yellow dot. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on how to create simple effects in Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 225. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than sixteen hundred movies, hundreds of hours, in depth and easy to view. Plus, premium members can now access sample media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it several times a month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com/membership. And thanks.